for me. Can you say it to yourself? What have you not done? Say it to God. Ah, hey, what have you not done? Oh, 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 for me. What have you not done? Oh, for me. What have you not done? Jesus, for me, what have you not done? Ha, for me, what have you not done? Hey, for me, what have you not done? Jesus, 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 what have you not done? For me, what have you not done? What have you not done for me? What have you not done for me? You've done everything. I'm just setting up the guys on Instagram. Oh 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 oh. You've done everything for me. You do everything. 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 So we give you the praise. Akuyala ba ma shala ba ma ande. Hey. So we give you the praise. We give you the praise. Jesus. And we give you a shout. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Praise God. So we give you a shout. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Akopro no Bokoba Santa Rimananda Bakoshanda. The Lord is good. That's right. We give the Lord a shout of praise. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Are you ready this morning? Oh my God, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Now get on your mark. Are you on your mark? Get on your mark. Has it been good? Has it been faithful? I've been kind. So we give him. So we give you. So we give you. So we give you. Give him. So we give him. Hey, for us to give him. Oh. So we give you. 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 Hey. So we give you a shot. Oh my God! Oh my God! And we give you a dance. He's worthy. Oh, so we give you a Ako Prados Kapayandos Kilamayandas. Somebody give the Lord some praise wherever you are this morning. Just give him a shout. Just give him a shout. Just give him a shout. And we give you a praise. We give you a shout. We give you a dance. We give you a clap offering this morning. Oh, Jesus. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ma. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Rakos Kapalaba, I want you to share this um, um this live service on your social media and just share it and tell people that God is about to do something this morning. Hey, hey, hey. 
Arono boko masata briata la baba ande. Ekoro no boko masina ma ande. Premendo skila ma. Arono boko give God praise with me this morning. Hey, everything for me. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. That's what I need you to say this morning. Just say, He's done everything. He's done everything for me. He's done everything for me. You've 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 done everything for us. You've done everything for me so we give you the glory you you've done everything for me you've done everything for me you've done everything for me you've done everything oh you've done everything for me you've done everything for me you've done everything for me we give you the glory oh You've done everything. You've done everything. You saved me. You redeemed me, oh God. You forgive all my sins. You heal all my diseases. You crown me with loving kindness and faithfulness. You saved my life from destruction, Jesus. You have done everything, oh. oh, oh. I give you a shout. I give you a praise. So we give you a shout. Let gratefulness flow from your heart this morning. Let gratefulness flow from your heart this morning. Not done. What have you not done for me? 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 What have you not done? Hallelujah to Jesus. You gave me a sound mind. You gave me a sound mind. What have you not done, oh Lord, my God? Oh, I bless your name, Jesus. I bless your name, oh Jesus. What have you not done, oh? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you guys doing? How are you doing? The Lord has been faithful. He has done so many amazing things for us and he is deserving of praise. Good morning and welcome to the gratitude service this morning. Um, and this is the matter service. Okay. If you have been following us in our journey called prayer, um, every Sunday, from now all the way till the end of the year is when we will hear the counsel of the Lord and receive direction as to how to run the race that has been marked out for us. And so this morning, the matter that the Holy Spirit has um, prompted and given to us as an instruction of direction is gratitude. Good afternoon, Donna. Is gratitude and I'm gonna tell you what that means so what this means first of all is that in our contemplation this week in the place of prayer what we ought to focus on as a house as a people as travelers is gratitude okay now I'm gonna tell you what gratitude means because you may think oh in the scale of everything that you know you know we you expect us to pray for why should we be praying for gratitude? Why should we? Why should gratitude feature in in what we should be praying? Good morning, everyone that is joining. Good morning, Malone. Good morning, Lulu. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome to the service. You may be wondering why is gratitude important? Why do we need to do this gratitude thing? I'm gonna to explain to you if you give me your ears, if you, if you if you lend me your attention in the next few minutes. I'm gonna to explain to you why gratitude is extremely important. It is extremely important um, for anyone who wants to take a journey with God, especially the journey of prayer. 
okay so this morning our contemplation is gratitude so all through the week all through till next week Sunday, hi Lulu, all through to L- next week Sunday, we're going to be focusing on gratitude, okay? We're going to be focusing on gratitude in the place of prayer and in our meditation, okay? Gratitude, just being grateful to God, just being grateful to God. And I- I- I'm convinced that after a couple of minutes this morning, you would you would think about your life again, okay? I know where you stand right now, you may not see so much of this. you may agree what, with the fact that yes, we should be grateful, gratitude is good, um, okay, what's gratitude though? You see, Lulu is asking what's gratitude, okay? Gratitude is just, sim- it simply means being grateful, okay? Being grateful, being thankful, okay? For what someone has done for you, for the good that someone has done for you. Um, so, Pay attention and follow me. I'm going to explain to you how this plays out in your life from the day that you have been born up until this present moment and how it even goes back even before you were born, okay? So that you will take this journey effectively and it will deliver all that God has planned it to deliver to you, okay? So get your Bibles with me this morning, okay? I'm going to be showing you some scriptures and we're going to look at it together. Okay, we will look at the Bible together this morning and we will both get to a place where we would accept our role as creatures of thanksgiving, as creatures of prayer and now that we ought to do these things. Okay, so on a direction, on an instruction and direction um, 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 handle, this is what we're going to be focusing on for the next seven days. Remember I told you, when we come every Sunday, we will find out um, what we set our pace for the next week or two weeks but minimum a week okay which is seven days so this gratitude will stay in our hearts for seven days as a matter of contemplation in the place of prayer in the place of meditation and how we go about our daily lives okay so now let me show you in the bible first thessalonians chapter number five okay if you can quickly find it first thessalonians chapter number five i read this scripture last week friday i believe last week friday i, I read the scripture last week friday i believe um first thessalonia chapter number five if you need help finding it if you find colossians then after colossians is thessalonians okay first thessalonians chapter number five and i'm gonna read from verse number 16 because of time okay because i want to i want to give you as much as i can within the time that i have this morning um, so first Thessalonians, first Thessalonians chapter number 5 from verse 16 it says always be joyful always be joyful no it didn't say sometimes be joyful because what you may think is look uh, is it possible for us to be joyful all the time because a lot of bad things happen to us the Bible says always and the, when the Bible says always the Bible is intentional about the always it is not sometimes I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this morning how it is possible for you to be joyful at all times. Because when you hear joy, you, you quickly think it is when you are excited. Joy is not excitement. Joy is not even happiness even. It's a different thing. Excitement are tied to the things in this world. So if someone gives you money, if I, put, if I, if I ask you to send me your account details and I put some money into your account, you're going to get excited, isn't it? You're going to get happy if I buy you a gift, something that you, you love so much, you, you've you always wanted to have it, but maybe you don't have the means, and I bring it to you as a gift, or I take you shopping, okay, or I take you on a holiday, or I just give you something that you, you, you really, really love. You're going to get excited, you're going to be happy, but guess what? If I tell you after a day or two days or an hour of giving you, if I say, look, I need to have it back, I've changed my mind, I'm not giving you anymore, you see, you can become sad again. So happiness is temporal, excitement is temporal, things make us happy, happenings, so uh, um, happiness and excitement are tied to events that happen to us, okay, and people can make you happy, people can also make you sad because they can withdraw that thing that they did that caused you to take the posture of happiness, but you see joy takes root in the spirit, joy has nothing to do with what is physical, so the moment you find joy, you can stay joyful at all times, okay? It does not deplete, um, it, it does not rakos kupayandas, it does not have anything to do with physical things. In other words, people cannot give you joy and people cannot take joy away from you. 
You can only choose to lose joy by yourself if you choose to relinquish and let it go. But if you choose to hold on to joy, no one can take it away from you because it is spiritual. And the Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So you see, how to get joy is enter into God's presence. And how to enter into God's presence is what I want to show you this morning. When you learn to enter into God's presence, your joy gets full. So it's like you go to the um, gas tank, uh, gas station, petrol station, to always fill up your gas, isn't it? And then your car can run for more. Okay? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The strength that we need to run our life comes from something called joy. And that's something called joy. You don't buy it in Tesco. You don't buy it in McDonald's. You, you encounter joy. You get given joy when you find your way into the presence of the Lord. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, how to get that joy? Okay? You have to sustain the skill and, the, and know the protocol of entering into the presence of God. Now, this is where gratitude comes in. Gratitude, this is where it comes in. Now, what is gratitude? When you are coming into the... So, if you want to go to Buckingham Palace, okay? If you want to go to Buckingham Palace and appear before the king, believe me, you're not just going to leave your house and stroll into Buckingham Palace. It's not possible. There's so much security, so much layers upon layers of security that you pass through before you can see the queen. Because she is a great monarch, isn't it? She rules a kingdom, okay? And so she is heavily defended. And there is a protocol to approach the queen. So if you want to go before the queen, what they will do is they will school you. They will give you basic royal etiquette. Do you understand? It's basic royal education so that you know how to approach royalty. Do you understand it? So that you don't come uncomely. So that you know how to come proper, correct, and be received with open arms by the queen. Okay? So they will teach you how that you must bow. Do you understand this? They, they will teach you how that you're not just going to stay before the queen and just look her in the eye and slap her high five. Do you understand this? You, you, you can't do that. Maybe if the king, if the queen decides to give you a high five, you can respond. But you can't go to the queen and, and just even just stretch your hand and try to shake her. Or, or slap her a high five or, or, or give her a nudge you can't do those things you can do that to your cousin you can even do it to your dad you can do it to you know your friends your mates but you can't do that to the queen you have to be taught how to come if not you can't come and God is a king have you heard it have you heard that God is a king and so also so many people think when they go to church they have gone into the presence of God no you can go to church and not see God and God they didn't even know you came you wouldn't even show up you just showed up in church among people you sat among the pews in the rows of the church and you know you got some fist bump from your mates and you're like yeah we came to church today and you sang and you did everything but you didn't come to God because God is a spirit don't forget God is not your church God is not the seats and the walls and the beautiful music that's not God God is a spirit. All that is done in church is done to the audience of one God, who is a spirit. So, it, 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 the only way it makes sense that you came to church is that the spirit, that spirit acknowledges your presence. Okay? That is why you can't worship God except you are in the spirit. So, if you want to approach this great spirit king, how do you come? Gratitude. So, when you are approaching, the security will check you, isn't it? You're coming to the king, you're coming to the queen, you come, you come, you want to come to the Buckingham Palace, they will check you. They'll make sure that you didn't, you're not bringing bomb, you're not bringing explosive, you're not bringing anything that will breach security. So they will, they will pat you down, they will check you, they will make sure that you, you are correct, everything is fine before they let you in. Okay, and you go through layers of security, and eventually, if you keep coming correct, you will get to meet the queen. Okay, all right then. So God has sent invitation out to his children, he wants them to come. But you don't just come anyhow you feel or anyhow you like. Okay? God is your father, but he is also a king. So when you, are, when you eventually approach him, he will give you a fatherly welcome. But to even get there, you have to pass through the protocols of a king. Do you understand? This? Is this making sense to you this morning? Okay. So, that's why the Bible says, be joyful at all times. Verse number 17, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Verse 16, be joyful always. Verse 17, never stop praying. Okay? Never stop praying. And then verse number 18, be thankful in all circumstances. I want you to underline these keywords. In all circumstances. Be, be thankful in all circumstances. This is gratefulness. In all circumstances. So, on the day that you are sad, 
you can't just come to God sad. See, it's okay for you to be sad because God understands that certain things happen that make us sad. But you see, still, when you are coming to God, you want to come and present the case that made you sad, but you don't just come with the case, okay? You, you, you pocket the case first. You come with gratitude. Then when you enter through the protocols and you finally get in front of him, then you now present your mother to say, Dad, you see, you can refer to him as Daddy. Just say, Father, I am, I am down. This happened to me. That happened to me. Can you help me? And then, and then God ministers strength to you. Your joy is topped up. And then that joy converts to strength. And then you leave his presence, not sad anymore. But perhaps you were not even able to make it to his presence. You, that's why people go to church with their sadness and they return back home with the sadness. It is because you didn't meet God. You didn't meet the one who takes burden away from people. The one who gives people joy instead of despair. You didn't meet him. You met the pastor. You, and unfortunately, if your pastor doesn't know how to teach you how to come. And he just, he just wants you to come to church. He doesn't want you to come to God. That's why I'm taking time to teach you these things. So that you don't just say, oh yeah, I tuned in for service today. It doesn't matter if you tuned in for service, if you didn't tune, tune into the spirit and encounter God. Be thankful in all circumstances for this is the will of God for you who belong to Christ. This is the will. So if you have ever wondered, hmm, how can I know God's will? This is one of you. His will is that you always come to him. And his will is that you make it when you come to him. That you eventually reach him. So his will is that you master the protocol of approaching him so that your approach is always successful. Do you understand this? It is his will that you are thankful in all circumstances because it guarantees that every time you approach God, you will actually reach him. Do you understand this? That was That's the first scripture I want to show you this morning. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. I'm just taking time to lay foundation before we start praying so that when I tell you to pray, you are already educated. You know what to pray. Okay? Now, let's check another scripture. Psalms 100. Okay? The book of Psalms is almost towards the middle of your Bible if you have a physical Bible. And if you have an electronic Bible, just search for Psalms. Psalms 100. Okay? This puts it more in context how to approach God. Psalms 100. Um... I read it says verse number one shout with joy to the Lord all the earth and I explained this to you on Sunday that God does not hate shouts God loves shout he loves people shouting in praise to him okay not just shouting because you're watching England versus um, Brazil okay not the shout that you hear in the pub when when people are you know high on alcohol not a shout you hear in the betting shop when when the horse that that you put money on wins or the team that you bet on scores and you shout go no not the shout you hear in the stadium not the shout that you hear in concert when people are watching beyonce and jay-z that's not the shout i'm talking about the shout that people shout in response to god's greatness and you shout and give a shout the kind of shout that i was shouting in the beginning of this service when i was saying give glory to god he's done everything for me and i'm shouting to him and I'm telling everybody, give the Lord a shout. Okay, so shout with joy. And remember where joy comes from. <laughs> See, this kind of shout, it is the shout that comes from those who have joy. Do you understand this? There is a shout that comes from those who are drunk on alcohol. And when they are shouting, you know, ah, this guy is drunk, isn't it? You can tell that, mm, he's drunk, he's drunk. There's a shout that comes from football fans. You know that their team has scored a goal. That's why he's shouting. You see? But there is a shout that comes from the company of those who have interacted with this thing called spiritual joy. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. God expects this shout from all the earth. Unfortunately, not all the earth are shouting for joy to the Lord. But that is why some of us have to shout and even louder until the earth, the sound of the praise of God resounds in all the earth. Especially you young ones. You ought to be giving the Lord the loudest of shout because you are the pinnacle of strength. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Can you see this? He's showing you how to come before the Lord. Okay? You, you come with a shout. You, you come with gladness in your heart. Oh, well, I just lost my job. Yeah. I know you're coming to tell God how that you've lost your job and how that he needs to provide a job for you, okay? You don't have money for your rent. I know you're coming to pray, okay? 
You want to come tell God how you don't have money for your rent? How you want him to help you? I know you're feeling sick and you want to pray to God and you want to tell him how that, oh my God, this, my head, my head hurts, my head hurts. Can you heal me, oh Lord? I know, I know you have needs, okay? But I'm telling you now how to, how to pray effective prayer. You don't start with those needs. You start with gratitude. Because you see, it is because you are alive, that's why you can have headache. You said someone who is dead and is in the grave, like someone who died from the time that COVID started in March, you know they cannot complain of headache now. They are dead, they are gone. But you see, you are alive. That is why you can complain that, oh, oh, headache, headache. It is because you are alive. So first of all, thank God for the life. Do you understand this? Thank God. Thank Him for the life. Oh, God is just hunger, you know. I don't have food to eat. Eh, you have belly to put the food. You see, someone who is in ICU, in the hospital, getting air through the nose, through the gas mask, and is in coma, they're not thinking of fried rice. They're not thinking of that nice Chinese. They can't think of pizza. They just want to live. They just want to survive. They just want to be alive again. They just want to be able to move their hands again. But you see, you can move your hand. That's why you're even saying, I'm tired. I'm tired. You see what you're doing with your own hand. Meanwhile, someone else, they go into an accident and their hands have been amputated. But you have hands. And all you use your hand to do is to put up the middle finger, isn't it? That's what you use your hand to do. Yet, so you don't know, so, so you don't understand gratitude. You are quick to complain. You are quick to mourn and complain and murmur. Oh my God, I wish I was born into Bill Gates' family. I wish I, do you know someone else wants to be where you are? Someone else just says, do you know someone else from the slums of Asia? From the slums of India? From the slums of someone, people are in Afghanistan right now trying to just run away. Just take me somewhere. People were dying. People were dying just trying to run out of a country. And you are here in England or, or Asia or wherever you're hearing me from and there is peace in your country to some extent at least you're not trying to run anywhere be grateful to God this are, you come with these things first you come with these things first before you present your headache you first of all say Lord I thank you for my life thank you because I have a head that can even ache you see if you, if you don't have a head would you complain of headache <laughs> oh my hand hurts it is because you have a hand so thank him for the hand thank him for the hand then you can say lord can you can you fix my hand but you must first learn to thank him this is the protocol of approaching the great monarch the great king god almighty shout for joy psalm 100 i'm back to the scripture again shout for joy in all, um, all the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him singing with joy so just in case look it's not it's, it's not a matter of oh i have a beautiful voice forget about all of those god knows the voice that you have he gave it to you okay so it is not that your voice sounds a certain way it is that you open up your mouth to make melodies to the lord he loves to hear it when you when you if you ever have kids or you've seen parents with their kids when the kids are saying mommy mommy and the kids do you think the parents are waiting to hear oh is it is her voice does he have the right tone no parents are just excited that you have a child and your child is running around and your child is running and lift on, lifting up their hands and hopping for you to carry them that's what god loves he's a father and if you don't sustain this kind of attitude when approaching him you will not meet him you will not get to meet him you want to complain you want to murmur the, the, the security protocols, they will turn you back at the gate. You won't enter. You will come to church, but you will not come to God. You will do, you say, I, I pray, I pray, God just doesn't answer. It's because you didn't pray right. The Bible says you do not have because you don't ask. And when you ask, you don't receive it because you ask wrongly. You ask on your selfish ambitions and, and, and your selfish intentions. Come before the Lord singing with joy. Verse number three. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. Acknowledge that you know the one you are coming to. That he is not your uncle. He is not your neighbor. He is not your boss at work. He is not your landlord. Do you understand this? He is the creator. He made you. It is out of the generosity of his decision that you happen to be alive and you are a person. And you are in this world. He, it was his decision. He, he, he just decided to to dis to put your life on display to get people to share in his uniqueness everybody's life is a unique part of god that god wants to show and is sharing so you see that your beautiful smile that's right it is a part of god that people will not have known because god is a spirit so we are the physical representation of this god we are his children so when we smile that is god smiling do you understand this but you see, you don't know. That's why you're always keeping a long face and a frown. 
You just don't know what I'm going through. That's not how to act. That's not how to act. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us. We are His. We are His people. The sheep of His pasture. The sheep of His pasture. He is a shepherd and we are the sheep of His pasture. Verse number 4 is critical now. Verse number 4 is critical now. Pay attention now. He says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving. So you see, there is a gate when you are coming to God. Are you listening to me this morning? There is a gate where you get to come to God. And the way to enter, to approach that gate, to gain entry, is that you come with thanksgiving in your heart. That as you are coming, thanksgiving is just pouring. Gratitude is pouring. Oh Lord, I thank you. Oh, it was not my alarm that woke me up this morning. It's your spirit that woke me up. Because some people set alarm before they went to bed yesterday night and they died in their sleep. Do you understand this? The alarm rang, they couldn't respond. They, they are dead, they are gone. Some people slept well, they woke up with a stroke. Some people slept well, they woke up with symptoms of cancer. Some people slept well, they came up with a terrible sickness. But I am here. I am here again. Lord, I thank you. I opened my eyes this morning. It was working. I can move. I can talk. I cause palada. You be thanksgiving begins to pour. Lord, I thank you for making me see for making me a lady. Thank you for making me a man. You know why you made me. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my dad. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for my siblings. And if you're the only sibling, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for making me, putting me where I am. Thank you because I'm in London. Thank you for your location. Thank you for your circumstance. Thank you that, Lord, I thank you. That even though I am poor right now, I know I won't be poor forever. But at least I have life. I have life so that I can have hope. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to even know you. For many are walking in darkness. They don't know the God who made the heavens and the earth. But I know you. So I thank you for that. Did you see that? Gratefulness begins to pour. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. That's right. Thank you for mercy. Bible says he has not treated us according to how our sins deserve. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. He who heals my diseases, he who forgives my sins, he who oh, he, he, he keeps me with loving kindness and tender mercy, he saves me from death and destruction. Do you know how many times the devil has tried to kill you? Yeah. Do you know how many times? And you just say, oh, I just got lucky. No, 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 no. There is nothing called luck. God protected you. God rescued you. He plucked your, your feet from the net of affliction. He saved you. Do you know how many times you got sick, critically ill? You were supposed to die. The devil actually, he wanted to kill you. You just thought, oh yeah, that's, that, that fever was really tough, boy. That, that, yeah, Some people have died from A fever. Do you know that? Some people die just from just common headache. People just die from just getting dizzy. Or they just trip and fall in their toilet. And they just fall and die. Do you understand this? Rakoko polobosi. People just they uh, you're complaining. Oh man, people are always speaking on me in school. People they always say, I, I don't look. Thank God. Thank God. Because when you are alive, there is hope. There is nothing that God cannot fix in your life. But the problem is because you are so ungrateful. You are so ungrateful. And ungrateful people are like cancer. They are like cancer. They just not want to take, 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 take. They can't give anything. Oh, but I don't have anything to give. You have thanksgiving to give. You have gratitude, intentional gratitude from your heart to give will you start from there God will do all that you are asking for and praying for if you know how to come correct the reason why your life has remained the same is because you have not met him the one who changes the life of man you have not met him when you meet him everything changes I'm teaching you how to come this morning and how to make sure that you meet him thank him for your family thank him for your job oh I don't have a job thank him still I'm alive I'm alive. I'm not in the mental asylum. Do you understand this? Because if you're in the mental asylum, you're not going to be applying for jobs. Oh, I've been applying for jobs all this while. I didn't even get any call for no interview. Every time I go, they don't, they don't pick me because they think I'm black. It's because I'm black. You're just complaining. You're moaning. You're a complainer. You know, if you're insane, if you're mad, you're not even going to be applying for jobs. Did you know that? You're not going to be applying for jobs. It is because your, your brain is even working. That's why you're applying for jobs. That's why they even consider you for interview. So thank God that you... And you never know what God is planning for you. Most of the times, our plans are too small. We think like ants. So you see that job that you thought you missed, and you thought you missed something, 
that was where the devil was waiting for you. That was where the devil was waiting for you. Because you will just be going to work one day and on that way to that particular job, there will be an accident and that accident will claim your life. And so God made sure you didn't get a job so that you don't have to even be going through that route. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? If only you know why God does certain things that he does. Why he makes some doors close towards you. Why he makes you not get certain opportunities, you will, you will be grateful to him. You will be grateful to him. You will be grateful to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. This is how to come. When you come, when you are coming, when you are approaching God, when you are approaching God, the gatekeepers are checking. What is she coming with? Oh, she's coming with complaint. Close the door. Close the door. We don't want, God doesn't want this kind of ones. Oh, she's coming with abuse. Abuse. Close the door. They're not going to let you in. You're not coming anywhere close to him. But when they check and they see she's coming with thanksgiving, ah, with all her, with all her troubles, with all her fears and anxiety, she's coming with it. They say, let him in. If I put him in front of the queue, put him in, they, they, they give you front row. When you have many troubles and you can still keep them and say, Lord, I don't see those troubles. What I see is you and your ability to fix anything. You can do anything. Thank you for the air. Thank you for oxygen. Thank you because my lungs can breathe it. You see those who have coronavirus, even though there is air, their lungs cannot breathe it. Machine how to breathe for them. But you can breathe air freely. And you're complaining. Oh my God, it's too hot. Oh my God, it's too hot. Oh God. I'm, are you being blessed this morning? Are you being blessed this morning? Are you being blessed? You're complaining. I don't like it's raining. I just don't like the rain. I just don't like the rain. Yet you like to buy apples from, from Tesco, isn't it? You like to go buy rice and buy banana. Yeah, how do you think those things are grown? How do you think they are grown? It is from rain that comes. But because you want to go to a party now, you want to go to a party and then the rain is falling. All of a sudden now, why is there even rain? Why is there rain? Why did God even create this rain? Oh, 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 oh there's rain and then there's muddy puddle and then a car drove past and splashed water on you. And then all you all the hell let loose now. See these foolish people, foolish people. Oh, why is there even rain? Why is there rain? Look at my light. Look at my lovely dress. Look at my lovely dress. Ungrateful souls. Ungrateful. Thank God for breathing. Talk to me this morning. I want you to tell, tell me why you are grateful. I want you to type it. Type it. Type it. I want to read it. Type it. Say, I'm, tell me. Tell, tell God what you are grateful for. I want you to type it this morning. Say, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my voice. I'm grateful for my, my brain is working. My eyes can see. My hands can move. Oh my God. I'm grateful for my family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your job. I know you're saying, oh, I ought to have been promoted a long time. They're not giving me promotion. They, they are racist. Racist. Stop complaining. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your roof. I'm grateful because I have roof over. That's right, Lulu. I'm grateful because I have roof over my head. Have you seen those people sleeping in bags by the streets? Have you seen them sleeping in the cold? And you walk past them every day. You know that's what you do. In fact, you don't, you move away. Say, Look at how dirty he is. You walk past him. Be grateful. Thank God. I'm grateful for a sound mind. That's right. I want you. I expect you to be pouring more than this. I expect you to be typing like crazy. Like rrr. this is where you need to type. Not when you want to go and watch pornography or, or when, when you want to just watch gossip on internet. Those are not fruitful typing. Now is when you are allowed to type. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I am great. Thank you for my dad. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for those things that looks like it's not good enough. Thank him for it. Thank you. Intentionally thank him for it. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you because I have brothers and sisters. Thank you because there is a prayer meeting and I found it. And I'm praying with saints. Thank you, Lord. You know some people are still having hangover from the party they went, they went to last night. From the, from the club. From the alcohol and the drugs. That they, they are still having hangover. Thank God that you don't have to be dealing with hangover of drugs. You are, you are in God's presence on the day of the Lord. Thank him for it. his gates with thanksgiving go into his courts with praise now why are all of these things important the reason is because when we want to pray you're praying to God okay and you are expecting to get an answer that is why the Bible that's why we call it the journey called prayer because praying is not you're not just throwing something to someone from afar do you understand this you're not just throwing to something to someone from afar to pray to God your prayer comes to God as you do you understand this? So the same way you can be denied entering into God's presence, your prayers can be denied. The Bible says the prayers of a sinner is an abomination to the Lord. God doesn't want to hear it. And I told you prayers are not heard in heaven as 
words. Prayers are heard. Prayers are prayers arrive in heaven. When prayer leave, when prayer is leaving you in the earth, it leaves you as words, like all these thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for my head. Thank you for my nose. Thank you for my finances. Thank you. That's how prayer leaves you. But when it is, it is now changed in the spirit. When it arrives in heaven, the way prayer arrives, it arrives like smell, incense, and smell. So. If your prayer, if you don't come with thanksgiving and, and thanksgiving and thanksgiving and, and grat- gratitude and praise and all of those things, those are the things that give your prayer a sweet smelling aroma. It is pleasant to smell. God smells it, he goes, mm. then out of the out of the bliss, he blesses you. But if you pray and you just come and complain, oh God, my hand is not working, my head is big, my the people are complaining that I, I'm sh- I'm too short. They're saying I'm too, I'm too, I'm too dark. Everybody's, they're being racist. They're being... If you come to God like that, your prayer smells like. If you have cats, have you ever smelled cat litter or dog litter or your own litter when you go to the toilet? Yeah, the gas that you pass, even you don't like to smell it, isn't it? It it would be like crazy, terrible odor. It's a stench from the grave. Have you smelled a dead rat before? Yeah, that's how complainers, that's how their prayers sound. So they just quickly spray air freshener. They diffuse your they diffuse your prayer. They don't want to smell it. They don't want to smell it. They just they just yeah, they diffuse it. They don't want to smell it. You can't come close to God. So if until you are accepted, your offering cannot be accepted. And I'm teaching you how to be accepted this morning. Let me read what Donna said, please. I'm grateful for the LSA family. That's right. I'm grateful for having ability to move. That's right. I'm grateful for clothes. That's right, Lulu. Thank you for my finances from Adebu Kola. That's right. Um, let me read Donna. Donna said, I am grateful for everything he has done for me. I'm grateful that my parents are still alive. I'm grateful eternally. That's right. So they may, they may not be in the best condition of health, but first thank God for them. That's the only way you can put in a case. Say, God, heal my prayers or, or help them. You first come with thanksgiving. If you just come and say, Lord, God, look, everybody's parents is fine. Why are my own parents like this? You're not going to reach him. You will reach him. Donna said, I'm grateful that God has given me another day to see, just to see another day. Did you see that? You wake up every day as if it is your right. Can you see the arrogance of men? You wake up every day as if, yeah, I deserve to be here. No, you don't. Newsflash, you don't. You are living on the generosity of God's mercy. That means it is by his mercy that we are not consumed. You don't deserve to be here. Because you are, not, you are here because he, he just permitted again. To see another day, I'm grateful that God has had patience with me through my life. Oh, Donna, your words touch me. And if it touches me, it touches God's heart. I'm grateful for the blood of the Lamb. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Eve. I'm grateful for the blood of the Lamb. I'm grateful for Eve. I don't know what that means. But you know, you know what you're grateful for. You know what you're grateful for. Psalm 100 verse number 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And go into his court with praise. So you see, this is how it works. You go through the gates first. Then you will now go through the courts. Are you following me this morning? Uh-huh. So I told you there is layers of security, isn't it? And if you try to go to Osgard, okay, you want to go to number 10. Okay, the door of number 10 is not, it's not just right there. On the, it's not just right there. You, you will pass through. You will pass through. Or, or, you want to go through. or you want to go through the Prime Minister's office. When you open the door of number 10, you're not, boom, you're not just in the Prime Minister's office. No, no, no. I'm not been there before, but I'm, I'm very sure that's not how it is. For everything. That's right, Lulu. Uh, that's right, I'm done now. Grateful for everything. That's right. If you want to go see the prime minister, when you open the door of number 10, you're not right by his table. No. No. <laughs> you go through a lot to get there. To get there. So the same thing, when you're coming to God, it isn't just one layer of security. It is easy to pass. Don't think it's hard. It's, it's so easy. The reason why people don't get there is because they don't know. They don't have shepherds, pastor, who really tell them. Because the pastor is busy trying to get to somewhere else. Because probably the pastor too doesn't give thanks anymore. You know? There is no prayer that is meaningful if it is void of thanksgiving. 
or everywhere. The Bible says, make all your requests known in thanksgiving. Make all your requests known with thanksgiving. Make all your requests known with thanksgiving. So, instead of saying, God, I need money, the better way to say it is, Lord, I thank you because you provide me with money. Because, because you know that I need money. Because you see, you, you can't inform God that you are broke. He knows already. Do you understand this? You can't educate him. You can't educate God that you are broke. You can't educate God that you are sick. You can't tell him. He knows. Do you understand this? You're not informing him. So when you're coming to God with your matters, he knows your matter. The Bible says that your, father, your heavenly father knows what you need even before you ask him. So a wise thing when you're coming to God is not just dump your requests on his table as though he doesn't know that God, look, maybe you didn't know. Look, I'm broke. Can you fix it? No, 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 no. You, you wrap it with thanksgiving. So imagine you're sending a letter to God. Okay? And you're not just going to send a plain white envelope in, in a plain white envelope or in a plain brown envelope. You're going to get an envelope and you're just going to write, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's, 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 that's what's on the envelope. Uh, so in the envelope will now be your letter of your deeds and your fears and your concerns all of those will be in the letter but the envelope you put in is wrapped and all over the envelope is just thank you thank you thank you and you put you put kisses on it okay you put kisses you spray perfume you that's how to present matters to god okay because he knows what you're coming to say but he wants to see how you would say it okay so come into his presence with thanksgiving enter go into his court with praise see what i was telling you about praise so I was telling you about praise because you can't come before God with a long face. So when you're coming to Him, you start with thanksgiving, you promote yourself to praise. Lord, you are powerful, you are great, you open the Red Sea. Oh my God, you begin to remind Him of His wonderful acts. Then God begins to feel like, Oh my God, this one knows what I can do. Whoa, God begins to shake a leg, He begins to shake a leg, He begins to shake a leg, He begins to shake a leg. Your enemies are in trouble. Oh, your enemies are in trouble. When you can get God fired up with your praise, you begin to praise Him. And the angels just begin to let it. They say, Let her come, let her come. We want people like this. We want pra- God loves praisers. Let her in, let her in. The angels let you in. The gatekeepers, they let you in. She comes with thanksgiving, let her in. She comes with praise on her lips, let her in. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Do you see now? Gratitude. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Verse number five. Why? Why? Why are we doing all of these things? Verse number five. Psalm 100 verse number five. If we were all in a room, I would, I would have asked all of us to read it together in unison. I would have said one, two, three, go. Everybody read. But I'll read it. And I hope you're reading the way you are. Verse number five. For the Lord is good. Woo! His faithfulness, his unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to every generation. So you see, that's why I said this gratitude it predates your birth and then from the day you were born up until now going forward you ought to be grateful for the goodness of God the kindness he showed to your parents it is because that they have life that's why they gave birth to you and that's and, and he has been watching over your family from generation to generation because he had a plan for a Lulu do you understand this and Lulu, you didn't just come in whenever you were born. No, there has been generations after generations after generations that led to you. So because of you, he kept those ones so that Elulu will come. And he's preserving you now too so that when your children comes, they would have to give glory to God for how he dealt with you. Do you understand this? Because your life will become a capital for them to start their own life, isn't it? And so you can say, oh, well, well my, my, if you only know my parents. You know, my, my parents were mean. Be grateful. Be grateful. They, they, they put you in the place where God needed you. Do you understand this? 
if you start your life poor, it's because you have the ability to, to break out of poverty and carry a lot of people. And there are people in that vicinity of poverty who will never make it out except you become the one who becomes the pathfinder. You find the way out and then you show people this is the way. So God puts you in that fix because he wants you to be the deliverer. Do you understand this? That's why Moses grew in the house of Pharaoh. So that he can see the suffering. Because if he was not on the other side, he maybe would not have compassion for the Israelites. But because he was on the other side, God made him grow up there. He saw how the royals lived in Egypt. And he saw the suffering of the people. So when God came and said, Moses, I have come down. I've seen the suffering of my people. Moses understood exactly what God was saying. So you can, that's right. So you can save your generation. That's why you were born where you were born. That's why you were scared and timid the way you are scared. So that you can know what people are going through. You're not the only one scared. People are scared to death. People are confused. But you must be the first person that breaks out of that fear. Breaks out of that confusion and tell people, Oh guys, I know how to overcome fear. I know how to overcome confusion. Follow me. Follow me. Let me show you Christ. The man who takes fear away. Let me show you the Holy Ghost. The one who makes a timid man bold like a lion. Let me show you the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How he can turn mourning into dancing. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? Yeah. Yeah. So that when Jesus will find Peter, he said, follow me. I will make you fish out of men. He's still struggling with fishes. God, God, Jesus said there are bigger things than fishes. Bigger things than fishes. See, as for fish, we can command fish to come. And Jesus proved it. He told Peter, throw your net on the right side. And Peter threw his net and he caught more fish than he has ever caught in all his fish, fisherman professional life. At one command, he caught so much fish. So Jesus said, you see, fish is not a problem. Okay? Let me show you how to catch better things. Men. How to catch men. And bring men to God. Do you understand this? For God is good. Ah, I'm poor. God is good. You will still you will soon see how that, that is good. You don't understand why. You don't understand why that's why you're money. You will see. Eventually, when God is done with you, you will see that God is good. Take it from the testimony of men that God has dealt with. This is David at Robocostilaba telling you that the Lord is good. Take it from the man who came from the backside of the devil desert, smelling like goat poo and sheep poo. And he's, a lion came, he slew a lion, he slew a bear. And on the day when his nation was shaking like jellyfish, threatened by the enemy nation, the 70 year old boy stood up and he said, God delivered me from the lion, he delivered me from the bear. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that threatens the army of the Lord? We don't need the army today. We just need one 70 year old David. Sometimes it doesn't matter with God either to conquer with few or to conquer with many. God can take one Lulu and he can set Manchester on fire. He can take one angel and set London on fire. He can take one donor. Don't worry about your age. Say, oh, if only I was still a teenager. If only, forget about those things. Do you know how old Moses was when he was sent to go and deliver people? 80 years old. 80, that's right, 80 years old. So your age is inconsequential when it comes to God using you. It is, your, it is your heart, it is your heart. And that's what God has sent me. I have been sent to prepare you. So, so this is not a preaching, do you understand this? I am charging you for the week. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? I'm not trying to, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm charging you for the week. So throughout this week, you're just, you're just busy being grateful. You're just, you know where people, Lulu, you're smiling too much this week. You say, oh, you don't understand. I've been grateful all my life. Now I understand how that God is responsible for all the things I've been taking for granted. You, ah, I thank God for my mom. I thank God. You're just thanking God for everything. Do you understand this? This is how to, because we waste our time doing four months of prayer. If we don't start well, you won't meet God. It will just be, and then you'll be more disappointed and say, well, they said we should pray. I've tried it. Four months, nothing happened. No, I don't know. You give up on prayer. That's why so many Christians have given up. That's why they're not praying anymore. Because they prayed, 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 prayed. It seemed like nothing happened. Because they just go there and everybody just starts going, blah, 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 and starts crying. Lord, heal me. Kill my enemies. See, God wants to kill your enemies more than you want him to kill your enemies. It's just that there is a way to employ his services. God doesn't just go to war anyhow. He goes to war for his friends. 
So you must first befriend him. Do you understand this? You must first befriend him. Then you can say, God, I've got some ops, you know. Can you come and help me deal with them? And he'll say, let's go. In fact, God will go fight before. You will not even know. He will go fight for you. You will be hearing the story later. Oh, you'll be hearing the story. You will not be saying, God, ah, something happened to my enemies. So you say, yeah, I went out to deal with them. I, I'm the one that went out. You know, you've just been so good. You, I, the way you, the way you, the way you honor me. I just felt, felt I should do something for you. That's how to go about it. There are some battles you wouldn't need to fight. There are certain things you wouldn't even need to, to, to be crying in prayer if you know how to be a good friend to the Lord. That Holy Spirit in your heart. That Holy Spirit in your heart. That you carry Him jealously. And you honor Him. And you don't want to hurt Him. So when you want to get angry, you come down and say, mm, 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 no, 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 no. I don't want to upset the Holy Spirit so that when I need Him, it's not hard to reach Him. Do you understand this? That's how to do it. But Lulu said, but wait, if God wants to kill people's enemies, wouldn't that be considered as hate? Or isn't God love? <laughs> oh my God, Lulu. Oh my God, Lulu. Oh my God, Lulu. God is a warrior, Lulu. Okay? God is a warrior. Okay? And warriors, they fight. And when there is war, there is casualties. People, people, people get killed. Okay? So God is a king and he has a territory to protect. Do you understand this, Lulu? Imagine, imagine Lulu, that your dad is, that your dad served in the military. Okay? And then one day, some just crazy, loose hoodlums just came to your house. And they came with knives and machetes. It's just silly people and you just want to come and butcher your family. They just want to cut everybody into pieces and just shed blood and go. Would you just say, oh, let's hug them. Let's embrace them. And say, oh, take my hand, take my hand. They cut my own hand first. Are you going to do that? No. That's why there is something called defense and security. Okay? So there's something called, and God defends his family. He protects his own. Because it's like you don't understand the devil that you are fighting. He is a vicious, wicked creature. Angry, forever angry. He's an angry creature. Do you understand this? So you don't have to offend the enemy for the enemy to hate you. And the devil doesn't come to your house as a beast and say, Oh, I've come for you. No, 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 no. He enters into people and he makes them move mad. Do you understand this? He enters into people and makes people just act crazy. So God wants to save people. He wants them to change. He wants the person who is being used by the devil to realize that the devil has no good to do so leave the devil and come but, but some people don't want God they just don't want God they like the devil they like to be on the devil's side so unfortunately those ones if they try to come touch God's children God will have to take, take them out do you understand this? do you understand what I'm saying now Lulu? God wants everybody to repent but the question is will all of them repent? the answer is no unfortunately as many as can be saved God wants them to be saved he wants the most wicked and angry person to become you know, calm and peaceful and gentle. But there are some people who, they just don't want God. They've chosen in their heart to reject God. Okay? And so they, the devil takes them, he uses them like Cain. Do you remember Lulu? Do you remember Lulu? Remember Lulu, uh, Cain was not born um, a terrible person. He, cho he decided to be terrible. Because even when he offered a sacrifice that was not pleasing to God, God still came to advise him. He said, Cain, 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 do it this way and I will accept you. Look at what Abel did. And I accepted him. That is the formula. Copy Abel and you'll be accepted too. Why are you angry? And God told him, he said, look, the devil is at the door. Sin is at the door. It wants to catch you. And you must quickly do something quickly. But Cain refused. Cain didn't do anything until eventually um, the devil entered him. And then he committed murder. Killed his brother. Did you see this? Killed his brother. And God still came and said, Cain, where is your brother? He said, should I know? Should I know? Can you see the spirit of wickedness? He didn't kill a neighbor, you know. He didn't kill a stranger. He killed his own family member. Should I know? Should I know? And God said, ah, okay. So would you say that God should not avenge Abel on Cain? And according to scriptures, Cain now become the father of the sons of the devil. Do you understand this? And then God gave Adam and Eve a replacement for Abel. Give them Seth. And Seth became the father of the sons of God. Okay? 
all the way to Noah, all the way to Abraham. <laughs> And then the sons of the devil, that spirit of rebellion, that disobedience and violence came from Cain. Okay? And so everyone who is on the side of Cain, God wants them saved. But if they choose that, I don't want God. I like this devil. I like the devil's side. Then if they try to touch God's children, God will take them out. Okay? So that's why you may see that God also can shed blood. But not because he is angry or vicious. It, is, it will be on the, on the account of defense and security protecting his people. Okay, so yeah, God will kill your enemies if they refuse to repent and they just want to hurt you, and they just want to hurt you. Ah, God would have it. So, Lulu, do you understand that now? Do you understand that now? Okay, it's good to ask questions sometimes. Okay, so I've done all I've done this morning to prepare you. Okay, to prepare you so that you come correct. Let me show you the danger of not coming correct, and then we're gonna pray. And then we're going to close. Open your Bible quickly to Exodus. This is very important. Let me show you. Quickly, 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 quickly. Exodus chapter number 19. Let me show you this. The Lord showed me this this morning. And I was like, oh my God. Woo. When people want to come to God, God prepares them. When people want to come to God, He prepares them. Because if you come anyhow, just in case you think, oh, well, the, what will happen is I'll just be turned back. No, it's more dangerous than that. Oh, but you said when people go to church, they don't come correct. They may just they may just not see God, but they still go home fine. You think so? You think so? God is more patient now. But don't think, you know when people say, oh, we're not in the era of law anymore. We're in the era of grace. We're in the era of grace. Have you not read in the scripture when the Bible says, if God dealt with them, that strong when they were under the law how much more do you think he will deal with us who are under grace when God has given us more equipment more knowledge you see all those guys in the Old Testament they didn't have a Bible do you understand this they had to learn by experience but you see for you you have Bible you have pastor you have all of these things you have teachings and preachings and all of these things you have grace you have the Holy Ghost you have the anointed so to whom much is given, much is expected. If you now want to act like an imbecile child and you want to act like someone who doesn't know anything, you think God will deal with you less. You ask yourself a question. If you employ people to serve you and you give one 100 pounds to go do what you send them to do and you give another one 1 million pounds to go do the same thing, who would you expect to not come to you with excuses? The one with 1 million, 1,000 or 1 million. Because you give him plenty of money. But the one with 100, he can still say, Oh, I wasn't able to do this because it was too expensive. I wasn't able to do this because I'm thinking the budget, the budget, the budget. So you will be able to, you'll be patient with that one. But the one that you've given all, all the money, and he's still complaining, you say, This one is this one is just useless. Just exactly. So that's how this issue of grace is. Grace is not a reason for you to just feel, oh yeah, God doesn't just, you know, he doesn't do those things anymore. You really you think so. That's why your life is still the way it is. Do you not understand? That's why you're going around in circles. That's why the devil is bullying you every day. Bullying you every day. Louis said, but yes, but also, didn't you say a few weeks ago that God is a commander? You said that God also advised Cain to do something. I know that God is a commander, but I'm kind of confused by that. Oh, that God advised Cain to do something. Okay, so Lulu, when I say God advise, Okay, is commanding. So if I use the word advice now, use your knowledge of all that you have learned. You now know that even when, because God always speaks softly, the Holy Spirit seems, speaks softly. Have you ever heard the voice shouting from your inside? Say, Lulu, stand up and pray now. Get up. Have you ever heard that? No. Most of the time, it will be so gentle and say, Lulu, it'd be nice for you to pray today. You just feel it in your heart. Or when you when you are rude to someone, do you hear the Holy Spirit shouting on your inside? Lulu, that's rude. That's rude. Now go and say sorry. No. He would say, Lulu, what you've done now, do you think it's good? You feel in your heart that gentle correction. And he would say, no, say sorry. That's not nice. <laughs> so you see, because it sounds soft, that's what I'm trying to say when I was teaching is, because it sounds soft doesn't mean it's an advice. It is a command. That is how God speaks. Do you understand this? So when I say God advised Cain, See, the mistake that Cain made was Cain thought it was an advice. 
that soft talk is a command. If Cain was wise, he should have quickly gone to do what that soft voice told him to do. Taking it as a command. Do you understand this? So when you're reading the Bible, it looks like a book that you can even rip and set on fire, isn't it? You can toss it under the table and say, cares, man. But you see, some of us, we see it as, hey, this is my life. This is my life. Uh, so that's the meaning of that. When God comes across, it won't come across as hard. But if you're wise, you will take it as serious instruction. Yeah? So he's a commander, but when he's commanding his people, he commands them, he expects them to understand the tone of his voice. Do you understand this? Does that make sense to you, Lulu, now? So that's what it means. So don't be confused. God is a commander, but his way of commanding is different from... It's because you are used to people bullying you. So you expect God to sound like those bullies too. No. No. He is a different kind of commander. So that's why he's love. Okay? He's, he's, oh, he commands in love. Did you see this? He commands in love. He doesn't command as a tyrant and say, Everybody, stand it this way from your... No, he doesn't do that. It is human beings that do that. Okay, let me quickly really show you this exciting scripture, and then we're gonna we're, we're charged up for the week. Are you are you ready for the week already? I want you to say, write your comment. Say, I'm ready for the week. I'm hyped. I'm pumped. I'm I'm super excited to go into this week, praising God, being grateful to God, and laying a foundation for my prayer journey. I want you to type it. Type it. Say, I'm ready. Are you ready for this week? Are you excited? Are you ready? Are you ready? And I hope you know you need to share this message because someone needs to hear it. Do you not agree with me? There are many people who need to hear this message. You need to share it. Take some 10 minutes. Cut some 10 minutes and share it on your page and cut some 5 minutes and say, ah, this 5 minutes, someone needs to hear it. I know someone that needs to hear this and send it to them and send it to them. Yes, I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm done uh, Yes, but not for school. <laughs> Lulu, don't worry. Very soon you'll be excited for school because you take Jesus to your school. Do you understand this? You take the renewed you. See, your school people have known you. They've known the version of Lulu. Okay? You now need to show them a different version. The version that the Holy Ghost has worked on. Okay? So, Lulu, remember the Bible says be excited, be happy, be thankful for everything. Okay? So, I, but I know what you mean by uh, not for school. But you will soon be excited for school because that's where your ships are, Lulu. That's where your disciples are. That's where you go to make disciples. That's where you go to shine your light because your school is dark, Lulu. Full of people who don't know God, darkness. Then you take light there and shine your light. But you have to first of all pray in the Holy Ghost for long. Okay? So follow me. I'm excited that you guys are excited. And, I, and you can see my cheeks so high. This is how you know I'm excited. You see my cheeks like this. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Oh my God. Exodus chapter number 19. Exodus chapter number 19. I'm going to read Exodus chapter... Pay, as I'm reading it, pay attention. Eh? And then you'll be seeing the things that I've been saying to you. This is an account of God calling the people to come to him. Okay? Just like I came to announce to you, God wants us to take a journey. Okay? Now, let's read. Exodus chapter number 19 from verse 1. It says, That evening, the two angels came to the entrance of... No, 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 no. no. This is, I opened Genesis. Sorry. I was wondering what two angels, Exodus chapter number 19. I opened uh, Genesis chapter number 19. Not two angels. Okay, I found it now. Exodus chapter number 19. It is exactly two months after Israel left Egypt. They arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. Verse number 2. And after breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and they set camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Okay? So, it's a mountain business. Remember, this journey that we are taking is to the mountain of God. That's where we are going. Just in case if you have not known. Where we are going is, is the mountain of God where, where people meet God. If you read through your Bible, you see people, God will call people to come to the mountain, isn't it? <laughs> we are going, we are journeying to the mountain and it is not, you can't climb this mountain with your own strength. Okay? You can't eat some sandwiches and say, yeah, 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 I, I, I'm ready now. I'm ready. No, no. You don't climb this mountain with the strength that comes from sandwiches and, and whatever you like to eat. No, 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 no. The strength you need for this mountain is give us this day our daily bread. Okay? Okay? Breakfast club. Did you remember that? Lulu, you didn't come today. You didn't come to breakfast club today. Okay, let's continue reading. 
Verse number three. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. So Mount Moses is a mountain climber now. He knows how to climb. But God wants everybody to climb. He doesn't just want Moses alone to be climbing. He wants everybody to climb. Okay? So God doesn't just want only pastors to be coming to him and pastors to say, I hear the Lord. This is what he said. You two have to hear him. Okay? Because the pastor is not more special than you. We are all God's children. So Moses climbed the mountain to appear before the Lord. The Lord called him to the mountain and said, Give this instruction to the family of Jacob. Just like God told me to give you guys instructions. And you have been following it wonderfully so far. Give this instruction to the family of Jacob. Announce to the descendants of Israel. Verse number 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagle's wings. And brought you to myself. Now, did you ever read that some eagle were flying and some people were in the back of the eagle um, during Exodus? Did you ever hear that? No, no, no. It looked like they traveled on foot and they were moving with their animals, but they were on the wings of eagle. So, you see, that your life that you're complaining about, God, God is carrying you. Oh, God. You just don't know. But if he drops you, that's when you will now know the difference. That, ah, ah, God, please, 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 please. He's carrying you. He's carrying you. So don't be ungrateful. Don't murmur. Don't complain. He said, tell the people how that I carried them on the eagle's wings and brought them to myself. So where God is bringing you is to himself. And he, he, he God, I light on, on the mountain. He says, now, if you would obey me and keep my command, you will be my special treasure from among all the people of the earth. For all the earth belongs to me. Verse number 6. And you will be my kingdom of priests. Remember when I was teaching about the priest nation? Yeah. God wants a kingdom of priests. He didn't want a kingdom when there is one priest. He didn't want a kingdom when there are few priests. He wants a kingdom of priests. Everybody is a priest. So when Jesus came, he changed the order of the Old Testament where there are only few priests. He, 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 he redeemed us into a kingdom of priests. So Lulu, you are a priest. Donna, you are a priest and a king. Lulu, you are a priest and a king. Adebukola, you are a priest and a king. Pastor Ivana, you are a priest and a king. And everyone watching me, you, you were redeemed by Christ. A kingdom of priests. Verse number 6, Exodus chapter number 19. You will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people. Okay, so Moses went to the mountain. God gave him this and said, go tell the people. Verse 7 now. So Moses returned from the mountain and called together the elders of the people and told them everything that the Lord had commanded him. Did you see this, uh, Lulu? Can you see that when God was speaking, God didn't tell Moses, I command you. No, no, no. He just spoke to him. But when Moses went down, he told them, he said all that God had commanded. Can you understand the speakings of God now? He told all the people all that God had commanded him. Verse number 8. And all the people responded together. We will do everything the Lord has commanded. So Moses brought the people's answer back to God. So the same way I came to you guys. and said God wants us to fast. He yeah, wants us to pray. From now all the way to December. And all of you say I'm in. I'll join. I'll pray. You see I took your response back to God. I said God they have answered. They have answered. And God now says, okay, I'll now give you instruction to give them. So God told me, he says, tell them to come every 6 a.m. in the morning for breakfast club. Tell them to observe the hours of prayer. Did you see how these things work? Did you see how this thing work? This is how to approach God. There is protocol to these things. And you are, I hope you are learning. I hope you are learning. Because you will soon begin to teach these things to people. Remember, we are all kingdom of priests. And priests stand between God and those God wants to deal with. Those God wants to deal with the world. And even some people who claim to be Christians, but they don't even know what Christianity is. You have to stand in the gap as a priest and, and help them so that they can become priests too. So Moses returned back to God and he took the people's answer back to the Lord. Verse number 9. I hope you're following me. I hope you're reading and following me as I'm reading it. Exodus chapter number 19 from verse 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will come down to you in a thick cloud, Moses, so the people themselves can hear me when I speak with you. Then they would always trust you. And Moses told the Lord, Moses told the Lord what the people had said. Then the Lord told Moses, Go down and prepare the people for my arrival. So you see, the service of today, the Lord commanded me as I was praying. He commanded me, He said, Prepare these people to 
as they want to come on this journey, prepare them to come right so that they can meet me. Can you see the reason why I have to come and tell you about gratitude? And can you see, Lulu, you didn't even know. You were asking me, what, what's gratitude do? And, you, and uh, imagine if I led you to take a prayer journey and you didn't even know what gratitude is. You will have wasted four months because you won't reach God. You won't reach Him. So God sent me to prepare you. And so to everyone who is hearing the sound of my voice across the world, wherever you're watching me from, this is how to approach the Lord. It is essential that in your lifetime, you must learn to frequently take a journey with God in prayer. And the way to come is the protocol of thanksgiving, praise, acknowledging the Lord. Preparing yourself before you approach the great monarch, the king of all the earth. And this is how to prepare. Watch this now. The Lord told Moses, go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today, tomorrow, and have them wash their clothes. So one of the instructions God gave to me to tell you is God said I should tell you, everyone, everybody that, is, that, that loves Life Spring Assembly, that is following this move and, and is praying this prayer with us and is on this campaign, the Lord said I should tell you to repent from all your wicked ways. And when I say wicked, I didn't mean you killed somebody or you, you have a gun or you're doing drugs. That's not, you see, those obvious things are the only things. So people think, I'm, I'm not wicked because I'm not doing drugs. I'm not, I'm not killing anyone. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 no. Anything, every, every rebellion to the instructions of God. So you see that your little disobedience, that your little lie is wickedness. Do you understand this? That your little, that your little stubbornness is wickedness. That your little prayerlessness is wickedness because if you had prayed, your prayer would have helped so many people, but you wouldn't pray now. That is wicked. God has prepared you a priest for your family, but you see that your ingratitude, that your ungratefulness, it has stopped God from flowing into your family because you are supposed to be the priest. And you who is supposed to bring the move of God, you are, you are a complainer, you are murmuring, you are a wicked person. That's why your family, because you will see now, as you begin to provide a a, a, a priesthood of alignment and you begin to repair your own altar you begin to see that everything around you begins to receive the touch of God then you now realize that ah so it has been because of me yeah yeah oh but I'm only 12 years old this has nothing to do with age Lulu I'm scared to teach people once it's time once once I'm scared to teach people once it's my time you won't be scared Lulu you're scared now because you haven't prayed enough when you pray enough you won't be scared it will be a pleasure to do your father's business. And the father's business is the family of bringing people. Do you understand this? So the Lord sent me to prepare you. And one of the instructions he gave to me to dispatch to you today is that repent from your wicked ways. Do you understand this? And one of the ways you've been wicked is that you've been ungrateful. You've been a complainer. You murmur. You are complaining. Repent from that. Change your mind. Repent simply means change your mind. Change your position. Change the direction you are traveling. Stop traveling in the direction of being sad and carrying long faces and being com a complaining person and change your direction to the direction of thanksgiving and being, and, being, and being nice with words towards God and not insult God but I know that He is Lord. Okay? Repent from your... whatever You know whatever you're doing that communist wickedness. You know the bad things that is not good that you know God doesn't like this thing. That you're doing repent that, that, that so see i'm saying it to you now but i've now taught you by wisdom you must understand that this is a command as i'm speaking now it's like a pastor is preaching you know apostle is preaching don't don't hear me like that hear me as if god is commanding you because you see god didn't speak directly to the people he sent moses he said go tell them and the people now they took it as a command they said yes we will do everything god has said that's, the, that's, that's a receptive heart. Okay? So, as I'm commanding you now, giving you the commands of the Lord to prepare you. And you see, God is not just telling them to do all these things just so that he can flex his muscles. He's saying, I want to come and meet you. And it is all the desire of your life to meet me. So, prepare yourself so that the meeting can happen. Do you understand this? So I'm not just telling you to repent so that you can be a nice person. I'm saying repent, change your ways so that you can meet God. Because until you meet him, you can never understand the plans he, have, he has for your life. You can't live the kind of life he designed you to live. You're going to keep struggling and toiling and being bullied by the devil. So repent. 
So Lord said to me to tell you, be grateful. Cultivate the attitude of thanksgiving and turn from your wicked ways. And let's see, the danger of now coming to God without preparing. Look, God, God said it here. Then the Lord told Moses, go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today, tomorrow. Have them wash their clothing. Be sure that they are ready on the third day. For on that day, the Lord will come down on the Mount Sinai and all the people, as all the people watch. Verse number 12, mark off the boundaries around the mountain. Warn the people, be careful, do not go up the mountain or even touch his boundaries. Did you see this? He says, don't, don't approach God if you are not ready. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't come. Please, it's better for you not to come. Oh, but they say it's my father. I'm just going to go. Please don't. Please, I beg you, don't. Don't just come to God anyhow. But you see, when you learn how to come, you come so freely and people are wondering, ah, but is it not the same God? Yeah, because you have mastered the protocol of approach. You now know how to honor God so you can come freely. It looks like you're going back and forth freely because you know how to come. But for those who don't know how to come, please just stay away. Stay far away. Mark the boundaries. Tell the people not to come. Anyone who touches the mountain will certainly be put to death. Did you see this, Lulu? No hand may touch the person or animal that crosses the boundary. Instead, stone them or shoot them with arrows. They must be put to death. However, pay attention to this now. Because you may be thinking, about oh, God, you want people to come and meet you. And then you're telling them to stay away, stay away. You're even making it so strong. There is a reason. Pay attention now. However, when the ram's horn sounds a long blast. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast. When you hear the sound of the horn. Then the people may go up to the mountain. So you see, God wants them to come off the mountain. He just wants them to be intentional and come correct. So he says, don't come until I call. Hmm? Don't come because the, the ram's on is not the... You know when you want to run a race? If you start before they blow the whistle, they're going to disqualify you, isn't it? That verse is verse number 13, Lulu. Verse number 13. Exodus chapter number 19. The verse I just read now is verse number 13. Have you ever watched the race in the Olympics? Okay. And they say, runners on your mark. And then you hear set. If you take off before you hear the gun, because the gun is the sound of go, it means you can go now. If you take off, you're going to be disqualified. You're not even going to get the opportunity to run the race anymore. They're going to take you out. They're going to take you out. You're not running anymore. You're not running. You're disqualified. You've let your nation down. So imagine you're running for Team GB and then you jump the gun. I'm sorry. There was a guy that did that. And they, they had to... That's it. G um, Team GB is not represented anymore. You, you, you start no chance to get no title. You're out of the race now. Come for another race. Not this one. Not this one. Okay? So, if you want to come to God, please come correct. Please come correct. And you may think, oh, but, but I've, gone, I've gone shabbily and I'm not dead. Listen to me. You, you may not physically die. But certain things will just be numb in your life. Certain things will just be as good as dead. You see the same way you have been trying and your anxiety is just not going. And that's it. That's death. That's, that's, that's what death looks like. I've taken time to teach you guys about death. Death is not just when you fall down to the floor and you're not breathing anymore. Death, death is, is a protocol. It has what it sells. It has its own unique identities. When things are not working, when things are hard, when things just look numb, it's not going, you're trying, it's not, that is death. Do you understand this? So when you keep going, you just barge into God's presence anyhow, something will die. Because he's a king and he doesn't lie. God doesn't lie. You just realize that your education is just not working. Your, 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 just, your paranoia is not going. Your, your, you're still as sensitive as you are. You're, you're still as foul-mouthed. In fact, you're just getting worse. Your fears are not departing from you. Your troubles are not... It, it, your, your life looks like it's dead. Things just look like... Are you learning this morning? Are you learning? God wants you to climb. He just wants you to know how to come. First! Remember, thanksgiving. Praise. Repent. Repent of your wicked ways. Because the Bible says, if I keep iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It says, but I confess my sins and I cried out to the Lord and the Lord answered me. That's a psalm I've quoted to you there. 
So let's press, let's press a little bit more. I love this scripture. When the Lord showed me this morning, I was excited. He said, go tell my people. So I'm delivering the message now. Are you receiving it? Like Moses and people said, we will do. Are, are you receiving it? Will you do what the Lord is commanding you? Respond, respond. I want to see your response because remember, I will take it back to the Lord. So, so I don't want to assume that you are agreeing with me. So if you disagree, you can say, no, I'm not going to do what the Lord has said. And, and then I'll, I'll tell him, I'll say, well, yeah. She said she doesn't want to. But if you agree, I want you to say it. Say, I agree. I will do what the Lord has said. And so when I go back, I'm going to take your response back to him. I say, Lord, they agree. They said they would do it. Because you see, instruction, further instruction now comes when people agree. So let me read some more. When you hear the long blast of the ram's horn, then the people may go up to the mountain. Verse number 14. So Moses went down to the people. He consecrated them for worship. And they washed their clothes. Meaning they repented. They tied it up their lives. Okay, Lulu agrees. I'll take your response back to the Lord. Uh, they, they washed, they consecrated their, their lives. They, 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 they changed their ways. They changed their ways. Pastor Evan says, I agree. I will do what the Lord has said. Amazing stuff. So Moses went out to the people. He consecrated them for worship. They washed their clothes. And he told them, get ready for the third day. And until then, as abstain from having sexual intercourse. It was that deep. Okay? It was that deep. Now, don't forget that these are shadows of things to come. Okay? All of these things mean things in our time. Okay? It means things in our time. But this was, for, for them, everything was physical then. For them, everything was physical. For us now, everything is spiritual. Do you understand this? Everything is more spiritual. For them, everything was spiritual, but because they didn't have the Holy Ghost on the inside of them, God had to make everything as physical as possible so that He can help them understand. But in our own time, things are not physical as much anymore. Things are more spiritual because we now have the Holy Ghost, so we ought to know better. Do you understand this? That is why we may not physically be parting the Red Sea anymore, but there are still Red Seas in our lives every day. We face circumstances in our lives that is like Red Sea. So you ought to now know that, oh, this is a Red Sea. And then you, you now check in the spirit how to part Red Seas. Do you understand this? We may not physically stroll into River Thames and start walking on water. But there are, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, it has meaning. And then when you understand what it means spiritually, then when you see certain circumstances in your life that looks like water, you can walk on it. Do you understand? It means do the naturally things that look naturally impossible. So, he told them, wash their clothes. So now, you say, ah, but I put my clothes in the wash all the time. I don't wear dirty clothes. So that means I must be a holy person. You see, that's, that's going to be foolishness, isn't it? Okay? In those days, God had to employ those physical means to help them. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost now. So when you hear, wash your clothes, it means repent, change your ways, tidy up, tidy up your spirit, tidy up your life. Stop lying, stop cheating, stop stealing. Stop spending your time doing silly things. Stop cursing. Stop that foul-mouthedness. Do you understand this? And get ready to meet with the Lord. And then verse number 16. On the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, loud blast of the ram's horn. Can you see this? Who was blowing it? <laughs> Angels. And all the people trembled. And Moses led them out of the camp to meet with God. Did you see this? Ah, so I'll stop there. So you see how to come to God. You see why? When you want to come to God, because God wants you to come, He will give instruction on the proceeding how to come. And you do well to adhere to it. And then you will see the Lord. And then you will be one of the ones in your generation who will tell of a meeting with the Lord. Because you can't go to God and meet Him and come back the same. It's impossible. When you meet God, it does something to you. And the beautiful thing is, you can go every day. You see? You can go every day. You can go all the time. So, the next four months is to get you addicted and to get you accustomed to the way of approaching God. Do you understand this? So that, so it's not like we're going to pray four months and then we're going to... No, no, no. After these four months, you now have the template of prayer. 
Do you understand this? After these four months, you now have the protocol printed in your psych subconscious. You now have the protocol of approaching God. It is now natural in you. Do you understand this? You can teach it to people. You can literally make someone experience God. You can say, look, I can show you the way to my God. You see, when a Muslim asks you, ah, how do you guys speak to God? What God are you speaking to? Or some idol worshiper tells you, oh, what do you mean by you speak to God? What? You can show them. The reason why you've not been able to answer those arguments is because even you don't know. Because you you are a Christian, but you've not met God. It's just in your head. It's just in your head. No! God does not live in your head. God is real. But those who know how to climb the mountains of God are the ones that can tell the story to say, I met the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha! I met the Lord. He is high and exalted. On the day that Isaiah saw him, he said, I saw the Lord seated upon his lofty thrones and the train of his robe filled the temple. And the pillars of the temple shook to his foundation. And I saw angels flying with six wings, mighty seraphims. With two wings, they cover their face. With two wings, they cover their feet. With two wings, they flew because the Lord is holy. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And then Isaiah said, hey, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. I have seen the Lord. I will die because I am a, I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among people of unclean lips. And quickly, an angel took a coal from the burning altar before the throne of God and he placed it on his tongue and he says, now your sins are forgiven. Now you can, and you will not die. You will not die. You will not die. Yeah. So I'm preparing you to approach the Lord. I'm teaching you the approaching protocol so that you can practice this on a daily basis. You can practice the presence of God. It's called practicing the presence. Practicing the presence. Practicing the presence. You practice the presence of God so much that it becomes your inheritance. You can show anybody anywhere the, path, the pathway to God. You can show them in your school. You can say, five of you, you want to experience God. Come, come, come. Gather around. Gather around. Gather around. And you can, oh, consider. You can bring God you see God said if you guys do what I told you I will come down and when they did it did God not come down he, they heard a loud sound blast of the, ram, uh, the, the ram's horn and then the, the thick billows of cloud and God descended in the form of fire he descended in the form of fire clouds and billows of smoke and, and he spoke and, and for the first time mortals they heard the thunderings of God's voice God is not far away that you can't reach him. The Bible says, it is your iniquities that has created a gap between you and God. He wants you to meet him. He wants to be known. So as you go into this week, the contemplation is gratitude. Don't miss the breakfast club, please. 6 a.m. Just know, what would you be doing with your life, please? What kind of sleep do you want to be sleeping? You'll be sleeping all your life. Okay? 6 a.m. You're, you're waiting for the thing to come on. You're even waiting 5, 5.59, 5, 6 a.m. You're in there. You're in there. Because you said you will obey the instruction now. So obey it. Turn up 6 a.m. Observe your prayer hours as much as you can. Put in minimum of 2 hours, 40 minutes all over the place during the day. 30 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 1 hour here. Do, do it consistently. 4 months. And God has promised me. He says, if you guys obey all the instruction I will be giving you as you're going, the result is that you will meet me. I will, I will. Every single one of you will have a testimony of an encounter with God. I promise you that. That's what God told me to tell you. And I, I kid you not. I lie not. It will happen. It will happen. And so therefore, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That the Spirit of God will engulf you. As you go on this journey, the kind that you have never been on before, receive the grace, the anointing, the power to journey with God. Receive the bread that sustains. The, this word that I speak to you, this is bread. Ah, This word that I speak to you, this is bread. And because you have prayed, that's why it made sense to you. If not, it would have just been another preaching. Uh, yeah, pastor's preaching. Just, you, you'll be eating cereal. Eating cereal. And painting your nails. As you are watching, painting your nails. It will make sense to you. But because you have prayed, we pray from Wednesday up until now. Your spirit is open. Your spirit is open. And then you can understand what God is saying. So that you can obey him. So that you can see God. May the Lord bless you. May he make his face shine on you. May this journey bear fruits in your life.
so that you can become someone who can show God to people at will. This is the inheritance of the sons of the Lord. I love you guys so much. Um, I'll see you as we report for duty 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. There is a there is a there's an artwork for it now, the breakfast club artwork. Please share it on your platforms. Pastor Ivana will make it available. Share it everywhere. Be bold to announce what God is doing. Okay, you'll be proud to be a part of it. Um, share it. And as we push out artworks for each week when we have new matters to press, share it to everyone. And tell someone, look, you need to be here. You need to experience this. Most importantly, gratitude is what should be on your heart for the next seven days until we come back on Sunday. So every breakfast club, we're praying gratitude. In your prayer hours, you're thanking God and you're repenting, preparing to meet him. Do you understand this now? Does this make sense to you? Okay? If, you, if, you, if it doesn't, listen to this message again. Listen to it again. Maybe listen to it like two or three times. So that you, because it's, a, it's an instruction manual. Do you understand this? It's an instruction manual. So listen to it again and again. Until you get it. Until you had it got. Yeah? And then, so that you can have a fruitful week before the Lord. Thanking Him. Just dancing. Just dancing to Him. Say, Lord, this dance is for you. This dance is for you. This dance is for you. And blow kisses to Him. And just love Him. And just thank him and just be grateful and you know what you are doing ha i am passing the gate checks i'm passing the gate checks i will meet the lord i don't know about you but i have insisted it's impossible i must meet the lord i must meet the lord and i'm excited like a kid that is about to meet his dad after a very long time i must meet the lord i must meet the lord i must see daddy i must see my dad i love you guys so much have you been blessed have you been blessed have you been blessed enjoy the rest of your evening Enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a delightful weekend. Um, and then power on in this journey. The Lord is with you. I love you. God bless you. God bless you, Donna. God bless you, Lulu. God bless you, Pastor Ivana. God bless you, Mulaya. God bless you, Adebukola. Uh, Mama Adebukola. God bless you. And God bless everyone else that is watching this, that will watch this. You are blessed. Uh, that's right. Donna said, I've been blessed. Amazing stuff. Uh, Lulu said, I've been blessed. Amazing stuff. Okay? So share the blessing with many, many people. Okay, share it on your social media platform. Just share it. Make an habit of it. Just press the share. Okay, and then Lulu, someone like you, you're young. You can go the extra mile. Grab 10, 10 minutes or five minutes or three minutes. Post it on your TikTok. Post it on your Instagram and, and, and post it. You say, look, word, mighty word. Everyone needs to hear this. That's how to make the word of God be part, be an evangelist. Make the word of God go out. Bible says, great is the company of those who publish. If you want to be great, publish the word of God. Publish it. Publish it. Post it. Post it. Keep posting it. Let everybody know your page for posting word. And this is what you does. If you go to Lulu's page, you find prophecies there. You find the word there. You find. And God will bless you for doing so. I love you guys. God bless you. And invite someone to come and pray if you can. If you have friends, tell them. Hey, you've got Instagram. Six o'clock in the morning. Try it. Try it. It will change your life. And you see what God can do. I love you guys so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.